Goeie vraag. Kobe Timmer Blaas, joh. Hmm. И некога е наставно. Перфекто добарадио и некога е басио. И ти си га украл? Што? Не са и стол от аймин. Што? Я и ду не думам, че ще работи. И стол съм му не се страш. Не съм га украл. И е, и е, whatever you say. Да, да, whatever I say. Също причаш английски? I got letter from draft. Draft? What, like wind? No, like regrutovanie. Oh, armia. Manzarita za pravo. Either way, they want to put me in military. Me in military. Oh, this little Tilmir not want to serve the glorious Yugoslav. Mojesh <laughs> Libyarubati. Shut up radio! Man, shut up about the radio! Why the hell would Tito want you anyway? Huh? Oh, look at Tio Mir. Big Zagreb man listens to music? Yeah. If either of us is to be drafted, we'll be me. Yeah, yeah, I know. Dalibor, you go cowboy. Da. Dalibor Mitchum? Dalibor Wayne? What's that? I do not think they will put you into their movies. Hemo, you should be at you. But he could go to America, he'd be deep as not. Why do you want to go to America? They are our enemies. So which is a Serb? Will you please speak in English? It is difficult to speak to someone who is not speaking. What? They want to draft me. I would think that my dear friend Dolabor would want to help me instead of dicking with radio. What? Speaking English will keep you from the army? Navy, actually, and yeah. If you're passing English, they will not draft you. But my English grade is not so good. Well, my English grade is fine, so... Bully my curats. How do you have better grade than me if you're from Lika? Man, I think they are targeting us. What? English students. I do not think they want us to learn English or something. I know of three people who have been... drafted from the department alone this year. Three? Really? Yeah, you're on him the, the blonde one, you're on the ugly one, and the Lazar oh, from the Almesha. Klupastvar! Man, are you listening? Anyone on edge of failing to the army or navy? Wait, 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 wait. Blonde Yaronim was the best student. 
I studied with him. He could like read the Bible in English. He could not have failed. Impossible. Kakova Grupa Stvarari! Dalibor? Da. Fuck the poster, Gospodinia. Zdorova. Sit. And speak in English. Oh. Okay. I understand you wish to challenge your notice of conscription? Uh, yes. I was under the standing that if I showed, um, proper academic initiative, that I would be exempt. I'm passing all my classes and still I get notice go to army. This happened to a friend of mine a few weeks ago too. Yes. So... Things have changed, Dalabar. You are taking English classes, you are doing well in them. You will serve. What? I cannot divulge any more information. But our army needs English interpreters for reasons. Oh. Well, what if I'm not good English? What? This is not a confession, sir, but I assume there are exams to be taken to be interpreter? Yes. Well, and again, this is not a confession, but what if I possibly cheated in my classes? So I have good grade, yes, but I... I do not really speak English at all. Right. Well, if that is the case, then your entire academic career will be ruined. Yeah, okay, Bolemakurat. Sorry, sir. There is also one problem with your idea. This is your English exam. And besides, English or no, you are from Lika. We know how you people are. Oh? Yes, you are at home in mountain. You sleep and you dream of mountain. You exhale and it is mountain air that you breathe.
Ruski. Нет. Я на немецкий. Я не говорит по-русски. И как ник? Э, что с немецкий? Вас? Ос Deutsch. Я Dalibor. Was? Uh, mein Name? Ah. Old P. Parbranats. Was? Uh. <sighs> ah. Niet. Lektor Panzer. Panzer. Tank? Ja, ja. Gesprengt. Tank. Äh. Oh. Dankeschön. Ja. Voll Schmieger? Äh. Ah. Oh, oh, da, da, da. Dann, zwei, zwei, da.
It went that way. If we cut around though. Oh, 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 good God, oh, oh, heavens above, oh, 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 Irrigate it now. Irrigate it now. Clean the wound. What? And you can remove Go. in the hospital. Oh. 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 How, how far away can you be safe? What? What? How far is 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 home or or hospital? Oh, I don't know. I, I two miles um uphill. God. Oh. 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 Ah. There is not enough. What? What? There is not enough bandage. Oh. Uh, can can you walk? Let's find out. Um, help me up. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, Wait. Wait, wait. Uh, Virginia! Huh? No. Hey! No, no, no. Virginia, no, no, no. where is she? No. Oh.
Dull. The knife is dull. Yeah, like really dull. Like I don't know if I can use it anymore. Watch. I don't know what to do about this. Yes, yes, I know. Leak uh, mountain person. Keep going on about it. You know, Teomir, I'm very jealous. You get drafted into the Navy, sit on board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have to. I have to speak English now. All these months I've been here, I think in Croat, talk in Croat. No English. And look, I am lost so much of what I know. And if I am found, or if uh, I can get help or something, this is the language I must speak. English. Hey, don't yell at me. You were the one wanting to practice so bad last time. I hope you're still around when I get back, buddy. If I come all this way, only to find out your ship sunk, I will be very mad at you. How much do I raise? I, well, I would raise at least double. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, so heavens just, above. <sighs> there she is. Dallas. 
You look plum worn, darling. Nice to see you too. You know, I was afraid I wouldn't get to see your lovely face this time around. Well, if I really scared you, you could have lent a hand with this cold I'm working. <laughs> I wasn't that scared. I knew I'd see you. What do we got going on here? I'll just make it my entry fee, courtesy of the Dallas Can't Play Poker Fund. Oh, really? I could have swore it was the Grace is a Dirty Cheat Fund. That star would have shot you for that accusation. She'd never. So how long you been in town? Just blew in this morning. Ran into Grace down at the feed store. She brought me up to see you. Well, you gotta stay the night. No can do, unfortunately. I said you got to. No, what I gotta do is get a truckload of limps into Jar Bridge by daybreak. Burn in the midnight oil. That's right. So you're shipping livestock now? By God. Like a champ, sis. Only way to do it. So what happened to the, uh, the logging truck? That getting up at two in the morning can go straight to hell. <laughs> That was the dirtiest job, I swear. You were in a truck. Oh, don't give me that. It would creep in under the floorboards and the cracks in the windshield. Can't even imagine being on the crew. They called it salvage logging, but those boys just looked like they were in a coal mine. What, from the ash? You got it. Some things can stay a man's job. <laughs> Let him have it, huh? Let him choke on it. The tree climbers especially. From hard hat to climbing spikes all black like a... like a phantom. Spooky. Sure. What do you expect, you know? Commies burnt the heart out of the state. Got the valley looking like one big crater. Oh, it ain't that bad. It's pretty bad. I just came from the Sutherland Stampede, so I should know it wasn't that bad. How'd you do in that, by the way? Nothing worth hollering about. Well, all I know is that it was 10 in the morning when I came rattling down that mountain. Middle of the day, mind you, it went pitch black all around. I had to stop because I couldn't see. All that kicked up ash just plumb swallowed me in my truck. So I'm sitting there, wearing my goggles, covering my mouth, just hoping no one would be fool enough to try to drive because they'd run right into me. And there are more than a few who were fool enough. They had to shut down the yarder and everything, and when things finally cleared up, I was ready to get the heck out of there. So I turned the key, I pumped the gas, I turned the key, I pumped the gas. All that ash got in, gummed up the engine. I had to climb up on it. No water to spare, you know, but the inside of my shirt was semi-clean, so I used that the best I could. Fat old man working on his motor behind calls out to me, whistling and all that. I told him right where he could shove those kind of compliments. Well, I finally got to the mill near 4 o'clock. I leave the keys in the scale shack and tell that office lady she can keep it. No thank you, ma'am. Coughed up black the entire time I worked that job. No thank you. What? Honey, I have missed your storytelling. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hauling for the Garen outfit now. As in Les Garen? His pappy, that's right. Les Garen. Always a good day when you don't hear his name. I can't believe it. Hey now, it's his dad I work for. Biggest ranch in northern Nevada. And can pay a decent wage. Unlike the places around here. Well, a lot of places can't afford it right now. I know, I don't hold it against them. But the war never made it to Nevada, so Nevada pays better. So I get my paycheck signed by a Nevadan. Les is all the way up here. He's got nothing to do with it. You're still contributing to the family fortune. <laughs> contributing? Hell, I'm leeching off it. Sitting up here playing poker instead of hauling his cattle. And getting paid for it, mind you. Les ain't that bad anyway. Neither is Khrushchev. Not that bad, huh? After what he did to Carmen? If his daddy wasn't who his daddy was, he'd have been locked up. And that's the man you work for. I don't know if I believe Carmen. I mean, if it really happened, why not take it to court? Why not indeed? Real sorry to hear about Virginia. I was devastated. Thank you. Just don't make sense to me, you know? The Agar sisters are supposed to be a trio. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Where were you during the occupation? Well, Jacob got drafted, you know, so I just lived on base. Fort Riley, Kansas. Thousands of miles from any fighting. We're sorry to hear about Jacob. We all got our share of it, didn't we? But life goes on, if you let it. 
And this one here sure is letting it by God. What do you mean? I mean that before the war you never heard of women riding rough stock and now uh, Annie Oakley exception that proves the rule Bonnie McCarroll well she was from Idaho like you good for us you know who did it was that Jean Autry dirt bag. can I what Jean what yeah back before World War II put an end to women's saddle bronc him and the rodeo association of America Changed it so that cowgirls could only be rodeo queen. Couldn't ride the beasts. Well, that sucker. Look who's laughing now, Jean. You are. <laughs> yes, I am. I've had about enough of you bad mouth and Jean Autry. You know how I stand in regards to him. It's not just the saddle bronc either, huh? What? You're whipping the fellas in the entire all around. So zagogenetics. <laughs> By God. I've been following the stand-ins. You're kicking butt, sugar plum. Uh, males are all the same. Doesn't matter if they're men or bulls, just gotta know how to handle them. <laughs> there you go. Slipped out of the Bronx, though. What's the deal there? Uh, clear out of the top 25. Some jackal from Arizona's on top now. To be fair, I never cracked the top three in Saddle Bronx. To be fair? Yeah, you know, in fairness. Fourth place is nothing worth crying over. You've forgotten that I know you, Grace. You only say to be fair when you messed up. Do I? Hmm. Why aren't you doing so hot in the Bronx? Uh, well... Oh no, did I put you on the spot there? Don't act like you're not enjoying it. Are you suggesting that I delight in your discomfort? You revel in it! Grace! <laughs> all right, all right! This was, uh, back in early June. I'd been on a huge circuit tear. I ended it in Silverdale, up in Washington. Oh, way up there, Olympic Peninsula? Yep. Was about to come home for a few days rest before heading to uh, Idaho and Wyoming and back again. Yeah. Well, well, the money, it just, it, it just wasn't there. I needed entry fees and gas money and it just wasn't there. So I figure, pawn the saddle, uh -oh. pawn the saddle when both events get it out of Hawk and come home. Oh no. This story better not be leading the way you're leading it. I didn't want to say anything when I got home because I knew you and Mama make a fit. Well, I'm fixing to make one now. So you didn't win both? Didn't win either. Sexist judges. So I siphoned gas all the way home and haven't been on a bronc since. You crook. First you cheat at poker and then you steal gas. For shame. You pawned. Paws Saddle in Silverdale, Washington. Technically, yes, I did. I ought to throw you down off of here. I'd take you with me. That would be fine. Listen, gals. Of all the things. He was the one who brought us up breaking colts anyway. I know it. Good luck being top of the saddle bronc without the way he raised you. I wasn't top of the saddle bronc. And how did you not have an entry fee or gas money anyway with all your winnings? Most of it was sitting in my room here to help out around the ranch. Most of it was spent in the bars from Canada to California, you mean. You see, I'd suspected you'd quit doing it. I didn't think. Pop saddle! And I torn up enough about it. You don't gotta keep going on. I don't know about you ladies, but I'm not feeling up for another game. Sorry, Elizabeth, you didn't get to play a hand, but, uh, yeah. Well, it, it was great seeing you. And great to be seen. I'll be up for Thanksgiving for sure, but I'm hoping to come through earlier. Yeah, well, we'll see you when we see you anyway. That's the plan, chickadee. I didn't see any truck out there. You need to ride into town? I was just gonna say. All right, I can take you in. One for the road? Don't mind if I do. Hey! It's a long night, that drive back to Drawbridge. I'll give it back next time I'm through. Yeah, all right. Was that pause flask? Just check it. Don't let her beat up on you, girl. Yeah, well, you get used to it when you're the youngest. Oh, yeah? Watch yourself out there, darling.
Now what in the heck are you going to do with this? Man, I can use it to make trap, uh, you know, for more food or to protect camp from coyote. Do you even know how to make trap with this? No. <laughs> so why do you have? Man, there's no, there's no fish on my, my fish are, on my, yeah, my Uditsia. Man, you are sucking at English. <laughs> Polly McCurrats. I had that for many reasons. I don't know when I can use, but uh, who knows? You don't. Is what I say. Alright dude, this one's going right between the eyes. Bang! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you like it? All your movies about West, now you are in West! It is not a fun time. <laughs> no? Have you met the John Wayne yet? No, but I bet he's around. Oh yeah. I know for a fact that Kirk Douglas is here. What? Yeah man! Indiansky Borat? Kirk Douglas. Pretty Indian girl in the Oregon. That was mm. a good movie. Yeah, I remember that Indian girl. Uh, Lon Chaney was in that one too, yes? Ugh. Man, Lon Chaney. Wolfman. Ah. Don't even talk about Wolfman. I'm being serious, man. That's scary. He's not real. You weren't there the other night. It sounded just like werewolves, the coyote. Man, werewolves are so cool. Dude, a cowboy could kill a werewolf. If he had a silver bullet? Well, anyone could kill a werewolf if he had a silver bullet. The Lone Ranger. He could kill a cow man. Uh, 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 a wolf man. That is the whole point of wolf man. You, you get silver, you get pure heart, and then you say a prayer by night. Yeah, yeah. Cowboys are cooler, though. So you still think that after now, you have to be one. I don't feel like real cowboy. I'm more like, uh, Soviet Koyasis Manuye. How do you figure that? He's all alone, you know. He has to survive. It's just, I get to be a mountain instead of really small in a house. Oh, oh, Randolph Scott. That Man of Forest movie. Yeah, I could be Randolph Scott. And I can see Mountain Tree Lika Man very well. <laughs> you bet it does. It's no wonder you couldn't figure out Chainsaw though. Hey, none of that. They knew I could handle this, you know. You like monsters? They said, go be on boat. I like cowboys? They say, here, go be a cowboy. Well, I might be monster too, you don't know. You're also not really here, so I'm safe.
Well, praise the Lord. A damn commie's been shitting in our woods. Seems he's been here a while. Well, I figure the only way he could have been here is if he's been here a while. He sure as hell picked a good place for his camp. Down by this creek here. You know, I wonder if this is where that, uh, that little crowd ended up. The one that got away from Willard Toombs and I up on Grizzly. We got his friend though, that's for damn sure. <laughs> Shit. Burnt the hell out of that guy. The little one, I don't know, he Less. scurried off somewhere. Less. A vagrant? On my property? We're no vagrants, sir. He had this military bag gear and a helmet, too. And a big Russian gun. I swear to God we would have got him if not for that rifle. So a commie, eh? Been out there some time. Camp appeared rather well lived. I swear to God we would have had him if not for that rifle. Yeah, where the Sam Hill? If I just had my six gun, though. What are you looking for, boss? You can see it in his face. You could tell he didn't have the guts to pull the trigger. Or we said you couldn't even see his face. Oh, I could. I could tell he didn't have the guts. Why? Well, it takes to get a hold of a fella who's got plenty of guts. Oh, what are you looking for, boss? Junior Hans' number. Remember them six Ruskies got bagged up there by Muddy Ranch out Antelope Way? Sure. Well, there's six of them, all camped out on the prairie. Well, Junior, he finds himself this Marine feller, some discharged war hero from Hepner. Last hero from Hepner, they call him. Anyway. Junior pulls some of his money with some other ranchers. They hire this fella to do some hunting. Well, I could see how a fella would be sore after what happened to Hepner. Well, why don't you just ask Julie? Switchboard operator ain't gonna have the number to a ranch all the way up in Antelope. Use some sense, boy. He really got all them Russians, huh? Yep, six of them. Got them all. They weren't even up with Muddy. They'd picked up camp and moved out to Guyton. But he sniffed them out anyhow. What, he killed them? Well, ain't that what I've been trying to say? Must be some real tough John Wayne type. Anyway, want to see if Junior can get a hold of him for me. Isn't that against the rules of war? The hell you say? <laughs> rules of war? I ain't never heard of no rules of war. What about the Genoa Convention and all that? Weren't they basically prisoners of war out on a, the Muddy or Guyton? Either way, you gotta keep your prisoners of war alive and exchange them when the war's over. Well, look who made himself a lawyer. Yeah, listen to Les. I mean, the war's already done anyhow. Well, I'd say that makes it worse. Mercy, son. You know the hunting season from Kent to Antelope has been damn near ruined for the year? You don't say. Sure. Squad of Ruskies out there killing and eating all the game they can going on four months, bound to ruin a hunt. Makes sense. Come to think of it, we haven't seen quite as many elk as normal this year, have we? Well, I think a war would scare them off just as good. So what? We let a bunch of AWOL Russians go and kill them all off once the war's done? Hell, son, you even American? What do you got there? Ha <laughs> ha, great. Thanks. Julie! Yeah, Mom Bentner here. Yeah, 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 how are you? If I'd only had my six gun, this would have been solved already. <laughs> and that, Miss Jones, is how a torpedo works. Heavens, Les. I'm not too keen on all this. Well, I think it's funny. This phone call Bettner's making, I mean. Oh. You think he realizes he's actually killing a man? He's hiring one man to kill another. Ain't no two ways about it. Uh, what do you care about a Russian, anyway? 
Junior, Montgomery Bentner here. Yeah, I bought that 1,000 Hereford off your paw about 10 years back. Yeah, how's the old ranch holding up now that the old man's gone? You know, come to think of it, you weren't part of the defense, were you? You don't say. How's that? Well, I tell you. When the commies invaded, you didn't join up in the defense. Remember that Marine fella you uh, All us ranch kids, Uncle Sam said, you don't have to join the service as long as you work and defend your property. And I worked right alongside you all the months of the war. Oh, sure, but you know, it was me and Phil, McFetridge, Willard Toombs. We was the ones out there with our rifles. Got a lot of guys here, a lot of fellows here. Mr. Bentner, too. And his wife and kids. But where were you? Well, I was driving. I was driving folks out to Bryanville. And let me know. Ah? Yes, sir. Remember, Doc Erickson's little setup in town wasn't enough, so we called for volunteers. Use my horse trailer as an ambulance. Which I should say, weren't none too easy, what with all the holes blasted in Highway 26. Real saint, ain't you? Nah. I just help where I can. Yeah, yeah, well, you too, and uh, say hello to your mama for me. Yeah. The hell I hire you for? Stand around Gavin? The nearsighted Robin. <laughs> <laughs> So, the cavalry on its way? Oh, saddle up, riding out, be here by end of the week. <laughs> Gonna kill that old red rooster when she comes. Gonna kill that old red rooster when she comes. Gonna kill that old red rooster. Gonna kill that old red rooster. Gonna kill that old red rooster when she comes. Get to work. <laughs> it true you killed six Russians out Antelope Way? Mongolians. They're Mongolians. Ah, whatever. Red's a red, I say, no matter the squint of his eye. The only thing you gotta worry about with this one is that big Russian gun of his. That is, if he's got the guts to use it. Hell, you should have seen what Willard Toombs and I went up against. You hear we took on a tank up on Grizzly Mountain? Hell, it's been a couple days. He's probably lit out entirely. You know what you ought to do? You ought to get yourself a bloodhound. I'll work alone. <laughs> well, shit, a bloodhound wouldn't bother nothing. I was just... Ah. Uh, that catch your meaning. All right, mister. I'm out of your hair.
<laughs> yeah!
Hello? 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 Pl please don't, don't y yell or uh, uh, scream or, or anything. Please, I'm, I'm not. Please, I, I will live. I will live. It's okay. I, 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 I will live. When, when coast clear, I will live. Would you please talk to me? Months now. I. I've been alone. I. It's, it's okay. I. I'm not a man of many words, but give me a second chance and I'll get them for you. Ah! Oh! Mm. Oh! Oh! Mm. Thank <laughs> you. 
Taking a break? Yep. Just got a phone call today from Wilshire. Seems like he heard some gunshot on his property this morning. Thought somebody's out hunting where they shouldn't be. Huh? So he went down the field, across the creek, and into the old bunkhouse. I don't know that. Well, there's this old bunkhouse. Well, I didn't know. Only been to Wilshire's once, haven't I? Well, there he is. And laying in it is the body of our boy. How's that now? Yeah, gruesome scene, I guess. Made ornery old Wilshire shaky to talk about it. Got cut with a saw chain and stabbed through the head. Jesus, God almighty. There was a Russian gun left outside the house and an army shirt. So you're telling me the Red's unarmed? Can't say for sure. One thing we do know, we outfoxed the Marine. Listen, this fence ain't gonna go anywhere. I might even tell Trevor, once he's done with the pipes, to come out and fix it. So if you wanted to go into town and, I don't know, spread the word, if you will, well, I'm just letting you know. I wouldn't stop you. enemy is in our midst. Still, after everything that we've been through, he's crept out of the hills and killed again. Now I don't know if this Russian's just some coward who went AWOL or perhaps if he was left behind by the people who occupied us so that he could resurface to destroy our community. I don't know and I don't claim to know. I'll let you decide for yourself. But I've just come from the Wilshire property where this foreign agent killed the last hero of Hebner in a most savage way. A killing that can only be committed by a man without a conscience. I'll spare you the details. It is only five months after they were pushed out of Oregon, three months since we kicked him out of the country entirely. We ought to be allowed to heal, don't you agree? We ought to be allowed to have peace, but the communist is not concerned with what ought to be. And I'm not talking about politics to you here. I'm talking about culture. 
the atheist communists who lament free people and free enterprise and all things godly. There is no God in Russia, and that is why there is no conscience. Because if people touch God anywhere, where is it except through their conscience? So what are they left with? They just want to conquest and confiscate like barbarians. I don't need to talk about all that. You went through it yourself. That's right. That's right, your sister. That's, that's awful. And I'm sorry. She was a great person, and there was absolutely no need for her to die. No reason for that war that stole her if they just stayed put. Hell, my vote says they came all this way to murder your sister personally. That's the way I would look at it if I was you. No reason for that war. But you know, that's the difference I was talking about. The difference in culture. Because Virginia was a free woman. That dead man on the Wilshire property was a free man. And these foreigners want to kill anyone who is truly free. That war never ended. Not in my book. Not as long as a Russian breathes our organ air. Unless we snuff them out, they will keep coming. Because they want to kill us. Now that is a fact we must face, and something we must deal with now. Before it is too late. <laughs> is that right? You disagree. Les Garen. When's the last time you saw me in a church? When's the last time somebody saw you in one? I'm not talking religion or politics here. I'm talking about the way things are. I'm talking about when yeah, you- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, much as I'd love to stand around and listen to you boys talk some more, I do have some pipes to change. Didn't you hear what he said? We gotta act now before it's too late. Yes, I, I heard that indeed. Just the same, though. Even after what they did to your back? See, that's just the point, Willard. Now, ever since they went and made a hunchback out of me, it takes me twice as long to do half as much work. So, uh, if you boys don't mind. Yeah, well, not like we need a cripple's help anyhow. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
So, what do you say? You're not actually considering it, are you? I was talking with Willard Toombs down there. He says he got one search party going down the John Day and another across the fossil beds. Well, we're trying to find the killer. My question is, how many times did you give that exact speech? Stick Virginia's name in there as well as anyone else's. I'm simply appealing to our sense of community here. Our sense of right and wrong. If you take care not to use my sister in peddling your cause, I'd be a lot happier about it. So you've got two search parties out there now? Well, yes. Yes, we do. But it goes right back to what I was saying. We have to deal with this fact now. We have to flush him out. You talk real well, Mr. Garin. You almost make me think of Proverbs 16. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. A violent man enticeth his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. Well, must be good news for me, because I'm not y'all's neighbor. I drove over half our county to be here today, because I knew that we would need someone as skilled on horse and rifle as you. And I had a feeling that you wouldn't want this man being brought to justice without the Agger sisters being represented. I've made my mind up. I'll be down shortly, Les. I am glad to hear it. I cannot believe you. The feeling's mutual. What do you mean? You would just sit by and let that enemy soldier run wild. Are you actually telling me that you bought into that man's words? I'm telling you he didn't even have to sell him. Crimey, if I would have known what would have come of this, I would have never told Mom. That man out there could be the very one that killed Virginia. Yeah? Yeah, it could be. It could be Khrushchev too. But are you gonna go around killing every bronc you see just because it could be the one daddy died on? Grace? No, no, grace me. I'm not just gonna let you boss me around I think here. it's real funny you bring up Pa to me. Yeah, I sold his saddle. I didn't lynch somebody over him. And if there's something I have a right to say as a member of this family, it's that daddy didn't raise us to be no killers. Him and Ma both raised us to be strong enough to fight for what's right. And this is right? This is retribution. Based on whose justice? Les Garen's? You know, I could have sworn you were alongside me at that sermon. The one after the liberation? Could have sworn you and I were sitting side by side when Reverend Laudrup read from the gospel. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Didn't we pray for the Russians? Didn't we forgive them? And like it says in Thessalonians 5, it's about time you stop talking religion to me. And your sense of right is based on what? You heard Les say it. How can you be fighting for God if you're going against his word? God's got nothing to do with it. I've made my mind up, and it would be best if you just got out of the way. Listen to yourself. I'm not moving from this doorway. You want to go to war, kid? I'd rather you and I came to blows than you go off to lynch somebody. Sinner, you better get ready. Oh, you better get ready. Hallelujah. Sinner, you better get ready. Time has come for the sinner to die. This goddamn thing. Well, no use feeling sorry for myself. Hey, mister! You're not dying, are you? You're not... Oh, good God.
Hey, don't worry, fella. We're gonna get you home just fine. I'd, uh, I would call the sheriff's office, but I saw a couple of their patrol cars uh, with that posse that's searching for you. So, that's not really looking like an option right now. The nearest hospital is, uh, I don't know, three be four hours away. You feeling up for that? What, you don't speak English anymore? What if they make us stop? How's that? The people looking for me. They stop you, kill you, kill me. Well, uh, it's looking like that's a risk we just might have to take. Hey, come on. I can handle myself just fine. If it, uh, if it comes to it. There are... Lots of them. Julie, hey, yeah, um, can you get me the vet's office, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should probably have that number down by now. Well, I... Thank you very much, darling. Rhett! Hey, it's Luke. Yeah, 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 no, I'm fine. I'm, um... You busy right now? Look, Red, I, uh, I need some help. I got a problem. Gunshot wound. Yeah. I um, can't see much over here. I'm on a party line. No, 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 nothing illegal. I, at least I don't reckon so. I need some help. Look, I, I've helped you for years doctoring those horses, and, and now I need some help back. Don't, don't now. Listen, I'm in over my head here. He's got a, a bullet cut clean through him. Eternal bleeding. He looks mighty dehydrated. I don't know, maybe more. Look, I'm not a doctor, Red. And with those fellows out looking for him, I'm... Red, please, I need help. I can't hack this on my own. I'm afraid that is just not an option, Rhett. Yeah. Look, uh, could you not tell anybody about this? I don't want any, any unwelcome company. Yeah. Thanks.
Yeah, I'm going to give it five more minutes and then I'm heading on home. Ruth's making her fried chicken and buttermilk biscuits. Now, if you can think of a better meal than that, Don, I'll lock you up. Crook County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff King speaking. Uh, can you hold on a second? Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just got off the phone with Gil Fisher. Out in Grant. Told me I should just hang the comment myself. Uh, I know you're a bit farther out, but... Yeah, mister, where are you calling from anyway? Oh, well, you know, that's a three-hour drive. Uh, do the vigilantes know you've got the fella? Yeah, uh, I understand. And I know it's out of your jurisdiction. But, uh... To hell with that. You let me worry about the paperwork, ass chewing, and anything else. I'm going to get my deputy, and I'm coming on down there. I don't waste time. I just assume you steal my money, you steal my time. I hate wasting time. Mr. Bentner, this here's Cody, that roughneck you had working on your hand crew last fall. I'm doing great, real great. Your boy Les is whipping the town into a frenzy, you know that, right? Yeah, I figured you did. Figured you commissioned him even. No, not making any accusation. What I'm making is an offer. I know exactly where that red is, you see, and I also know that he's got about three hours to get there and get the job done before the commie gets shipped out of the country. He's about to ride off into the sunset and live himself a long and happy life. No, no, I don't work for you. I ain't no killer, Mr. Bentner. All I am is a man with a phone. A phone and a party line who just happened to overhear a little something. If you can get the message out to Les, have him come to my house with $500 and I will tell him exactly where to set the hounds. He knows where I live. This ain't a barter, you sucker! My price is my price, and it's up to you if you want to match it or not. Still there? Oh, I'd say he's got less than three hours now. All the time you've wasted lollygagging around. Well, that's good. That, that's real good. I. I knew you'd come around, sir. Darla? Get your dress on, we're going out tonight.
find an old man like me Five hundred dollars. Know what all we can do with that? Hell, I'm just two hundred shy of that new Cadillac. Gonna get it all white. Convertible. White wall tires. Mm mm. And I believe that is our paycheck arriving now. Baby, I'm so glad I picked up that phone when I did. First things first, tonight we're lighting this town up. Just imagine how good you're gonna look cuddled up next to me in that new caddy with the top down. Hot damn. How the hell you been, Liz? Oh, I've been keeping up with myself. Kind of pushing it for time, aren't you? It's almost worried this transaction wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. So... Bring that $500? <laughs> no, Cody, I, uh, I was told to come negotiate with you. Well, I ain't gonna be doing any negotiating. <laughs> Neither am I. Everybody just calm down. Now I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna see if Luke will talk to me. Elizabeth? Yeah. You wanna come with? Could help, considering. Alright, now y'all just stay put and don't do anything stupid. We'll be back. Just a minute. I'm coming. Evening, Luke. Why don't you invite Elizabeth and me inside? What are you doing here? Oh, I think you already know. Now there's a lot of boys in those pickups and cars out yonder. And I'm having them stay there. There is no reason why we can't come to a peaceable solution. But we're not going to be able to come to such a happy ending if you don't let us come inside. He through there. Who? Luke. Don't. No one wants to hurt you. But time is a ticking. That's right, and if you just hand him over, we can go about our way. Look, this is not the way this country works. So how does it then? Just let the Russians come in and walk all over us? No. Listen! The Kirk County Sheriff's Department is on its way. Right now. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to take that man in there, they're going to lock him in the back of a car, and they're going to turn him over to the appropriate officials. And what makes these appropriate officials so high and mighty? What happens after they get him? They might decide to hang him, you know? Is it okay for them to hang a man, but not us? See, that's just the point. You can't compare a, a, a vengeful mob to a court. Vengeful mob, he says. We are simply seeking justice. And these systems that you put so much faith in, Luke, where were they when the Russians came marching in? They spun around, ran away, and let them march right on over us. And if it wasn't for our own people, with our own guns, we'd be living in the socialist state of Oregon right this goddamn minute. First off, don't tell me what I believe in. Don't presume to know me, Les Garen. And if you want to talk about justice, well, here's this. 
it's just as you want, justice is coming. They're out of their jurisdiction. Or what, do you only follow the law when it can help you out? Look, the law is meant to be interpreted in a lenient manner. Sometimes I lean to one side and sometimes the other. <laughs> Good way to look at things. But this is more than the law we're talking about here, isn't it? You want to kill a human being. You and I have both done it before. Sure? Sure, yeah, I, uh... I killed two fellows during the war. You seem to change the number you killed every time I hear you talk about it, though. But if you really watch someone die, I have to ask why you want to do this. Why do you want to kill again? Because of the principle of the matter. What principle is that? He is the enemy! He killed our people, he attacked our community, and we have the right to defend ourselves. That one boy in there did all the killing. Planned the invasions, all his idea. Ah, he was a part of it! He was a part of it, yes, and nothing more. Now he's some 20-year-old something, stranded in a foreign country, away from his people, away from his family. You wanna make us sympathize with the Russian? When they occupied this state, they didn't show any sympathy for us. Oh, yes, he did. Care to elaborate? I should have just told the truth from the get-go. Maybe everybody out there would have been a sight more sympathetic. You couldn't have rounded up a posse. What are you talking about, Luke? I'm talking about how the boy Laying in my bed right now is the very same soldier that saved my life after the bomb went off. Bull. That was an American soldier. Yeah. I said he was American, sure, because that's, that's what made sense. I mean, I mean, how do you go from being in a firefight with somebody to them saving your life? I thought I was remembering it wrong. But as soon as I saw his eyes when he was laying in my field, I sure as shit remembered. No, it, it it was an American soldier because he told you how to keep your, your wound clean going up the mountain. Oh, you were there, huh? Yeah. What can I say? He speaks English. I even talked to him a little bit as I was dragging him into the house. So he is the one who killed Virginia. No. I don't know. I didn't... I didn't see what happened. Let's see if I'm remembering your story correctly. Luke, you and Virginia open fire on a pair of Russians. Kill one. You turn your back and she gets blown up. And you get your back shredded. That sound about right? Yeah. Then doesn't that narrow it down? Think about it though. Why would a man throw a grenade and then run to save the survivor? You said it yourself. It doesn't make any sense. That's why you lied in the first place. Now, no one can fault you for lying. It doesn't make sense, but that don't change things. Your house and my sister's killer, and you will turn him over. And you better be quick about it, too. Who knows how much longer those boys out there will sit calmly by. Well, they haven't started coming at us yet. I reckon they're only doing what you tell them. <laughs> Maybe so. So you better hand him over. Unless you want I to tell them that we gotta take him ourselves. You wanna come into my house and threaten me? Keep going. See how that works out for you. You wanna get killed right alongside him? You wanna get killed trying to get at him? <laughs> Our boy is getting riled. You know, for a man who does so much preaching less, you share our one disrespecting son of a bitch. Elizabeth, you gotta realize, okay, that for less and for that mob out there, this is not about Virginia. Well, it is for me. What do you think it's about for us, huh? We just want to get together, have ourselves a hanging? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, you go right ahead and don't presume to know me yourself. How about we wrap this up, Les? Well, the law ain't the only clock ticking down. That boy was shot through the stomach. That a fact. It is indeed. Let me tell you a story. When I was born, my pa had this border collie Australian Shepherd, name of Jake. 
when I was brought home, Jake got really protective. We'd growl at strangers that got too close. Growl at my pa sometimes. He snapped at him once trying to take me out of my crib. So the story goes. Anyway, when I was seven, maybe eight, my old man and I were at the wood pile. He was chopping wood and I was stacking it. He had this, this double headed axe. Well, we finished up for the day and he put his axe into the chopping block and called for Jake to go home. Really loud whistle, you know, those two fingered whistles. Well, Jake comes running towards the wood pile I just stacked and he can't see over it. And he, and he jumps over and he, um, and he lands on the axe and splits himself right open. Pa had to put him down right there and then, of course, put him out of his misery. Jake was going to die that night anyway. And I don't have much confidence that that boy has a much better chance. So if he's fit to die, why not let him go? Put him out of his misery, as you say. Because he's not an animal. He's a person. And if you can't tell the difference, that speaks more about you than it does me. I don't see where he's so quick to save this man. Okay, so you might think you owe him something, but what about the fact that he killed Virginia? Right. And what about the last hero of Hetner? Didn't just kill him, stuck a bayonet through his head. So there you go. You suddenly don't believe in killing anymore. That's all right. But we got two dead bodies as proof that he doesn't agree with you. How does that make you feel? War is a different circumstance. You know who you remind me of? My old man. You want to talk fathers, Luke? How about this? Mine told me to leave Nevada and never come back. Said I was a... a blemish on the family. And that a family of the Garen stature can't tolerate a blemish. He's real respectable like that. He does everything right, holds his head up high. And if he needs to twist and turn a situation around to make it so he was right all along, he can sure as hell do that too. War is a different circumstance indeed, Luke. You know, I could have left this goddamn town when the war was coming toward us, and I could leave this house empty-handed. But I am in control of my life now, by God. And I ain't given to walking away. Not no more. You come this far. Why turn back now? I reckon. How admirable of you. I don't aim to be admired. Don't you worry about that. Les, you gotta learn to shut up. If you want to tell your life story and argue your self-worth, he'll be more than happy to do that. It keeps the topic off that commie in there, and the more time we waste, the closer he gets to see in daylight again. All right. All right, so you're not budging. Look, you can't do this, Les, okay? What can I say to convince you to leave well enough alone? You have said more than enough already. We're about done talking now. Look, imagine if you were in his place, okay? Imagine if you were in his... So this is the man himself. I heard you talking. Figured you should get a good look at me. Mighty kind of you, mister. Why don't I put an end to all this right here and now? Why don't you? Now I got the hammer on this scattergun pulled. And I don't give a good goddamn who your daddy is, you Winnemucca pissant. I will split you in two! Single barrel 410, huh? You fancy yourself a sharpshooter, Luke? If ever there'd be a target to practice on, it'd be you, Les Garen.
Well, I may want him dead, but I'm not about to stick my own neck out to do it. You better thank your lucky stars, boy, for Luke and that shotgun. Because without them, you'd already be strung up on that big old maple out there. Magpies picking your eyes out. I forget the English word, but we say Pado Branas. I jump from plane to fight. I jump into Alaska when we hit the pipeline. I jumped into British Columbia, into Washington, and here into Central Oregon. But one time is different. We are crossing the river into Portland. The American army blew up all bridges when it evacuated to slow us down. And we will be slowed down. Whether we rebuild bridge or wait for boats, it will take time. Russian general says, we cross tonight. River is 15 meters deep, uh, uh, 200 across, and it is on fire. And we are not amphibian uh, uh, ma marine troops. We don't have this training. Some can't swim. He says, we cross tonight. So we're all swimming across. Uh, we get about halfway and I, I, I see this soldier, he's having trouble, you know. So I stop and help. He can't swim anymore and I'm, I'm getting the pack off him, I'm helping him. And I stop and I look. Can't see Vancouver anymore. Can't see Portland, can't see the bridges. It's like... We're standing in this room now, four walls, but the walls are fire. Rain is coming down like uh, buckets. And I didn't have time to think then, but in these months I've been in the mountains, I've thought about it. I remember a book. Dante's Inferno. Are you trying to tell us something? We won in Portland, of course. Occupied the city in 12 hours. Then moved on to next target. I'm telling you this. I swam into hell. I walked out. I jumped here, into the mountain, I walked down from that. Now I am here, just as well. I will walk out of your country, whatever I must walk through. And I'm not Russian, man. Yugoslavian. You still want to defend this man, Luke? Hell, I think he might be right, even. What? Look, a lot of people died in the war. A lot of people go up in the mountains and die even in peacetime. The old man upstairs saw fit for him to get through both those ordeals. Well, I don't know. He must think awfully high of the fella. Well, I know that shotgun wasn't pointed at you, Elizabeth, but personally, I don't care for our odds here. Yeah? Gonna have to go outside and tell those boys we couldn't strike up a deal. Ain't nobody gonna want to kill me to get at that red. See, that's where you're wrong. Even after all your talk, that just ain't the way things is. 
Not everybody is like you, Les. You know, I think you underestimate me. And overestimate them. Since they're going to see this is the last light to go out in the house, they're going to think we're still in here. So when I turn off this light, we got to move fast. Now if we need to run, can you run? Yes. Alright. Here we go. Stay here. It's me, it's me, it's me. Alright? Yeah. Alright, they broke a window out front. They're getting restless. We need to do something, we need to do something fast. Oh, yes, me. You okay? Just scared me. Okay. Alright, you take a right on this road out front here, okay? And you follow that until you get to the highway. And you take a left, and you stay on it, and that's going to bring you to Prineville. Y you want to run for it? Well, here's what I'm thinking. If I start shooting out the front, that's going to bring him around to return fire. And then you can duck out the back. Uh, you won't get, be able to get in my truck. They're, um, they're parked behind it. And there's no way out. You just hide outside, and you hightail it when you can. Do you think you can make it? Yes. What about you? Don't worry about me. this door. You run in ahead of me, I'll take him by surprise. All right? All right? Oh! 
How is she? That man, Luke, he killed her. Yet another Agar sister must now be buried. He killed Elizabeth to save an enemy soldier. We have to find him, and we have to take care of him. We owe her that much. Where is he? Where is he? Uh, we followed Luke to the woodshed. We don't know where the commie is, though. Shit, man. Get off me! He's not here. He's gone. Probably went to crawl in a ditch and die somewhere. It's over. I'm sorry that I had to kill Elizabeth. something I'll have to live with for the rest of my life.
walking stick There's a tumbleweed with no name Where the tomato plant meets the sun-baked brick There's a baseball glove far from a game Where the hornet's nest meets the river stone there's a license plate from Tennessee Where the home I know meets the poison bones It's where you'll find all the men like me Baseball club.